A bright afternoon to everyone. I am Aishwarya studying first MPC in TTWRC by Varangal. Okay, let us start our presentation with an interesting story. Are you eager to listen that story? Okay, let us enter into our story. Once upon a time, there lived a small family in a small city where there were many factories located in their locality. So one day, a boy in that family wants to celebrate his birthday party very grandly by calling all his family and friends. He called everyone and he distributed them food in a food packets which are made up of plastic. All of them had the snacks and threw all the food packets beside the compound wall in an open flat. The days were passed on but the food packets which are thrown by them were not decomposed and beyond that they were producing many toxic gases which is affecting the air water surroundings here what happened here what is the reason behind it it's all because the excess usage of the plastic and natural resources have led to the environmental pollution now i think you all got my topic what i'm going to say is environmental pollution Okay, today's objectives includes air pollution, atmospheric pollution, acid rains, global warming, smog, water pollution, soil pollution, the strategies to control environmental damage and green chemistry. Due to lack of time, today we will be discussing only about air pollution. So, let us understand what does this environmental pollution mean? Generally, the pollution, the effect of undesirable changes that occurs in the environment which has a harmful effects on both human beings and plants is known as environmental pollution. The based on the contaminants of the medium, the environmental pollution is divided into three types. One is air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution. So today we are going to discuss about air pollution. Air pollution occurs in both stratosphere and troposphere. The air pollution that takes place in the lowest region of the earth's surface which is about 10 kilometers is known as tropospheric pollution. In this region, the gaseous air pollutants and particulate matter causes air pollution. So let us detailly learn about gaseous air pollutants. Firstly, let us start with oxides of sulfur. Generally, the sulfur is produced by the burning of the fossil fuels, paper industries and volcanic eruptions. When the sulfur reacts with the oxygen and ozone present in the atmosphere, it forms the respective oxides. Even small amount of sulfur dioxide in the air causes many respiratory diseases in human beings like breathlessness, bronchitis and emphysema. It causes stiffness of flowers in the plants. Now, let us move to the oxides of nitrogen. Generally, we all know that our atmosphere consists of 78% of the nitrogen and 21% of the oxygen. Now, my question is, do these two gases react with each other? Well, that's right. The nitrogen and oxygen reacts with each other during lightning and forms their respective oxides. Have you never ever experienced a right and irritant haze in the traffic region or in congested places? Right, that is nitric oxide. It causes acute respiratory diseases in children and it affects the leaves of the plants which in turn results in the rate of photosynthesis of the plants. Now, let us move on to the oxides of carbon. Firstly, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is generally produced by the burning of the fossil fuels and volcanic eruptions. When the carbon monoxide level reaches 3 to 4 percentage in the atmosphere and when we breathe in carbon monoxide and when it reacts with the hemoglobin present in, the, in our blood and when it forms the carbon carboxyhemoglobin, it is 300 times stable than the oxyhemoglobin and it does not allow oxygen to pass into our blood. So, which in turn results in the weak eyesight cardiovascular diseases and nervousness. So this is the main reason why we suggest the pregnant ladies to not to smoke during their pregnancy periods because it leads to induced premature deliveries, spontaneous abortions and deformed baby births. Now let us move to hydrocarbons. I think you all got clarity that what does this hydrocarbons means. 
The name itself indicates that the compounds which are having hydrogen and carbon is known as hydrocarbons. These are carcinogenic. What does this mean? What is carcinogenic? Well, the compounds which causes cancer is known as carcinogenic and it causes aging and shedding down of leaves in the plants. Now, let me see you a gas which is very familiar to us and it is generally produced through our respiration. Can you guess what is a gas? Well, that is carbon dioxide. It is the main constituent for the global warming. And our troposphere is confined of 0.03 percentage of the carbon dioxide. Generally, in our atmosphere, the balance of the carbon dioxide is maintained by the green plants. Huh? But how? How does it possible? The answer is photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, the green plants absorb the carbon dioxide and produces oxygen and fresh air into the atmosphere. But due to increase in the deforestation and burning of the fossil fuels, this delicate atmospheric balance is getting disturbed. So the increase in these type of greenhouse gases like oxides of sulfur, nitrogen and CFCs that are chlorofluorocarbons will increase the temperature of the globe which is known as global warming effect. So, the annual increase in the temperature is known as global warming. If it continues, within a few years, it leads to melting of the polar regions, which in turn results in the submerging of the low-lying continents. And it brings in various deadly diseases like dengue, malaria and yellow fever. So, it is very important for us to get rid of all these emissions. Now, let us move to the acid rains. Generally, we all know that the rain clouds are made up of pure water, isn't it? Well, but sometimes some gases such as carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen trioxide chemically reacts with the water and oxygen present in the atmosphere and forms few respective oxides like carbonic acid, sulfuric and sulfurous acid nitric and nitrous acid and falls back to the earth in the form of acid rains. Now comes to the question that what are the major sources of the acid rains? Well, there are mainly two sources. One is natural source that is rotting of vegetation and volcanic eruptions releases many gas into the atmosphere which leads to acid rains. But mostly the acid rains is the result of the man-made causes like the burning of the fossil fuels and fly ash coming from the factories. And now comes the crucial question that how does the rain clouds turn acidic? Before knowing to about this, it is very important that already the rain water is little bit acidic. Is it so surprising to you by listening this statement? But yes, that is true. But let us know how does it possible. When the rain falls towards the earth, it absorbs the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere and forms carbonic acid with the pH 6. When it absorbs more strong acids like sulfuric and sulfurous acid, it forms acid rains with a pH less than 5.6. So these acid rains are very harmful to the natural monuments like Taj Mahal as it decolorizes or it pales the color of the natural monuments. Now let us move to the particulate air pollutants. These include smoke, dust, mist, fumes. Let us learn detail about each and every one of them. Firstly, smoke. The solid and liquid airborne particles which are generally produced by the burning of the compounds is known as smoke. Then coming to dust. When the solid substances are subjected to chiseling and grinding, it produces fine particles which are about 1 micron in diameter which are known as dust. It is generally produced by the pulverization of coal and fly ash coming from the factories. Mist is a spraying or it's generally produced by the spraying of the insecticides and herbicides in the agricultural fields. Fumes are generally absorbed in the chemical reactions like distillation and boiling. Apart from these four particulate air pollutants, there are two other main air pollutants. They are lead and smog. Lead is generally produced by the vehicles which use leaded petrol. And the lead will damage the maturation and development of the RBCs in the human beings. This is the reason why most of the cities in India has banned the usage of the leaded petrol. Now coming to smog. Smog is generally produced by the and generally it is the formation of the smoke and fog. It is classified into two types. One is classical smog 
and the other one is photochemical smog. Let us learn detailly about them. Firstly, classical smog. It is generally observed in the cool and humid climate and it is also known as oxidizing smog as it contains sulfur dioxide in it. In 1952, the London was trapped with the classical smog for about 5 days. This is the reason it is also known as London smog. Then coming to photochemical smog. It occurs in the hot and humid climate, so this is the reason it is also known as summer smog. And the Los Angeles was trapped with the photochemical smog, so this is the reason it is also known as Los Angeles smog. Now, how does this photochemical smog is formed? How, let us know the formation of the photochemicals. When, as we already discussed, the nitrogen and oxygen reacts with the reacts with each other during lightning and forms nitrogen monoxide. So, when the nitrogen dioxide absorbs the heat energy and it splits into nitric oxide and nascent oxygen atom. As I said before, the nascent oxygen is very reactive in nature and it chemically it reacts with the another oxygen present in the atmosphere and forms ozone. When the ozone and nitrogen monoxide reacts, then it forms brown nitrogen dioxide. Both the brown nitrogen dioxide and ozone chemically reacts with the unburnt hydrocarbons to produce few photochemicals like formaldehyde, acrylene and peroxyacetylnitrate. These photochemicals are very harmful to the human beings. It causes eye irritant, throat irritant, lung irritant, chest pain and it decolorizes and it and it decolorizes the metal surfaces. So, it is very important for us to get control over the formation of the photochemicals by using catalytic converters in automobiles and the plants like pyrus, pinus, juriparus can metabolize the nitrogen dioxide. Now comes to ozone layer. As this is the summer season, we usually carry an umbrella or we apply the sunscreen, isn't it? But have you never ever thought why do we do it so? What is the reason behind it? Well, it is only because to an extent we all experience the harmful effects of the ozone layer. So, the UV rays are generally absorbed by the protective layer which is present in the stratosphere that is known as ozone layer. Now, let us know how this ozone layer is formed. When the, night, when the oxygen will absorb the UV rays, it splits into two nascent reactive oxygen atoms. As I said just before, the nascent oxygen is very reactive in nature. It absorbs the it absorbs the energy and it immediately reacts with the another oxygen present in the atmosphere and forms ozone layer. But the atmospheric scientist of Antarctica has said that the ozone layer is depleting by the over usage of the CFCs. What are CFCs here? The CFCs are the non-toxic and non-inflammable and they are constantly produced by the using of the refrigerators and air conditioners. But how does this possible? How does this chlorofluorocarbons will lead to the depletion of the ozone layer? Let us understand it in detail. When the chlorofluorocarbons reach the stratosphere and when they are hit by the UV rays, they splits into chlorine radicals. When this chlorine radicals reacts with the oxygen present in the atmosphere, it forms chlorine monoxide radicals. On further oxidation, it produces even more chlorine radicals. So, as this process results in the dynamic equilibrium and as the CFCs constantly reacts with the ozone, it results in the ozone depletion. So, what are the adverse effects of the ozone depletion on human beings? Let us know. Yes. The ozone depletion will make the skin cancer, cataract and it kills the phytoplanktons and it affects the fish productivity. So, it is very important for us to get rid over the emissions of the chlorofluorocarbons. We should reduce the emissions of the chlorofluorocarbons. Now, so to overcome all these uh, effects of the environmental pollution, we should take few preventive measures to protect ourselves. So, now let us see few preventive measures which helps us by protecting ourselves from the environmental pollution. Firstly, using of the public transportations. The using of the public transportations is sure a short way which reduces the air pollution. The use of CNGs will be the best alternative and regular pollution checkup should be done to your vehicles.
and the more the usage of the personal vehicles will leads to the more the emissions of the unwanted gases into the atmosphere which is very harmful to our environment so we should minimize the usage of the personal transportations and it's better to choose the public transportations now coming to say no to plastic bags as i said you in the beginning the plastic bags take much more time to decompose completely in the environment so we should replace them with the cloth bags or paper bags so we can even distribute the cloth bags in the shopping malls or malls so at least to minimize some extent of the usage of the plastic bags and turn off the lights when not in use the energy which is consumed by the lights for glowing will also contribute to air pollution is it so surprising to you by listening that statement but yes that's true but how does it possible when the electricity is produced it emits many gases into the atmosphere which causes air pollution so it's very important for us to use the energy saving fluorescent lights to help our environment then coming to recycle and reuse the concept of recycle and reuse will not only just conserve the resources but also helps us in the reduction of the air pollution causing emissions into the environment then coming to reduction of forest fires and smoking the collection of garbage and getting it on fire is huge factor for the air pollution and also the smoke will make the air quality to become worse in along with damaging one's health obviously so we should get rid of these forest fires and smoking then use of fans instead of using air conditioners the air conditioners will produce cfcs which is a major reason for the ozone depletion so we should replace them with the fans and also the cfcs will release much heat to the environment which increases the temperature and which in turn results in the global warming so it's very important for us to use the fans and earthen pots instead of using the air conditioners or refrigerators then coming to avoid using of the products which has high chemical contents instead use the compounds which has less chemical composition or use the compounds which has which are made up of the organic matter and because they are very eco friendly to our environment then avoid usage of the crackers so the usage of the crackers during festival and marriages is really one of the saddest moment which causes the air pollution because it forms the layer of the smog which is very harmful to our environment therefore the practice of no crackers should be implemented right from today then coming to implement afforestation this is the last one but it is very crucial one so as a responsible citizen we every one of us has a responsibility to plant at least one sapling throughout your life span because it helps our environment a lot so let me recapitulate what i said in this session Firstly we have learned about the environmental pollution environmental pollution is the effect of undesirable changes that occurs in the environment which causes harm to both animals and plants then we have learned the gaseous air pollutants which includes oxides of sulfur nitrogen carbon and in that we have studied about carbon monoxide hydrocarbons and carbon dioxide and we also studied about particulate air pollutants which includes smoke dust mist fumes lead and smog we have also discussed about smog and their types they are classical smog and photochemical smog and also we have discussed about adverse effects of the acid rains and the causes of the acid rains and how to prevent the acid rains and we have also discussed about ozone depletion and their adverse effects on the human beings and plants and animals so lastly i would like to thank my session by saying a quote that is please be a part of solution but not be a part of pollution so lastly my heartfelt thank you to the secretary sir and the regional coordinator of varangal and karimnagar region that is ds venkana sir and the principal of varangal cboe surendra sir and my mentor teachers kantya sir and madhavi madam and all my friends and staff teachers thank you so much